What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Dragon Quest VIII, The Journey of the Cursed King, once again to me, the Lonesome Ravder. Now guys and gals, you join me once again in the wonderful world of Emperor I, can, I still can't decide how on earth to say that. Emperor Kachu is how I kind of decided how to say it last time. Anyway, welcome back to Dragon Quest VIII, ladies and gentlemen, as I have now ventured all around the entire like universe of this island. Universe of this island, best way to put it. Um, and I've grabbed some new governs, nothing really incredible. Um, he says he's just got a couple of new things. Uh, Oh no, that's not exactly at all new. I think I've accidentally muddled it all up with the other stuff. That's a great way of doing it, Jordan. Good job. Um, yes, annoyingly I managed to find a magical mace. I was like, yay! I was really unhappy about that. Uh, that's not new. Uh, that is new. I think, other than that, I got a bunch of monster coins and stuff because I slayed down the monsters. I was also slightly wrong on um, where I thought Stone Man was. He's not here. He is elsewhere, I, which we'll eventually get to anyway. So I won't spoil it too much to where he is. We'll find him eventually. We just can't get to him yet, which is a pain in the ass. So yay. But um, yes, we can't get to him yet. So unfortunately, we're just sort of doing this for now. So um, yeah, I'm not going to really worry about selling my kind of monster coins just yet. I'll do that whenever. And all the weapons and stuff here, I don't really know their kind of potential and stuff. I know the skull ring changes into... I can't fully remember. Um, but yeah, for now, nothing really kind of much has changed. The only thing I can actually really mention of change equipment-wise is this. The Yangus, which was out and about there, which honestly was the best thing out there. And um, yeah, other than that, that's really about it. I've, I made some slight mild additions to the monster team as well. Um, I don't know which members I switched around or anything like that at all, but... Uh, at this point, um, I did switch around a... Yeah, that's what my base team is still all there and stuff. But I did manage to find this beauty as well. I think he's probably my reserves. Or it is one of those beauties, I mean. And as well, um, if we go to team two, uh, this bad boy, another good old uh, giant guy. So that's pretty sweet. What I will do, actually, is I'll first switch around this. So we have kind of the best of the best in here. Yes, please. And actually, 5 to 5. We'll just sort of base it on HP for now. Potbelly is a pretty good one, in all fairness. So, yeah, he can sort of like, he can do that. And, uh, yeah, so. All the tributes. What the hell does that mean? Oh, okay, that must mean like the teams, I'm guessing, right? Oh, okay, cool. Look how swanky that looks, eh? Anyway, um, and, uh, yeah, so really, that is about it. Um. Wow, number of turns team will stay in battles. The actual second one actually comes in for longer. That's pretty cool. I don't know what antiquates that. Maybe it's because the other team is slightly weaker, I guess, but that's pretty sweet. So, cool. Okay, that's pretty, pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, so other than that, guys and gals, there's not really too much else in the island we really need to do, except speak to the chieftain in the big house. And, uh, oh, I also raid the front of the stuff as well, because I haven't actually done this yet. At one point, we will venture, as a perfect example, once again, back to Princess Minnie's place because we do need to grab, uh, well, kind of go there and hand in the rest of our mini medals because we have, I think, nine now to hand in, if I remember rightly how much was there a second ago. Um, I've fully slept up, by the way. I probably will save here at one point as well because I haven't just saved for a bit. Hello, lads. Speak of the devil, and thou shall appear. All right. By the goddess, visitor Spiffing, I am the priest of this little settlement. I found my way here when my ship was wrecked on the, sho the shoals of this island many years ago. Of course, it was at the will of the goddess. Ever since then, I have devoted my life to teaching the natives about uh, here about her truth. I must admit, it hasn't always been easy. Uh, no, I shall not bemoan this great responsibility which the goddess has bestowed upon me. She has entrusted her wayward she sheep to, ca to my care. Blah. It is my secret mission. Pardon me. There we go, thank you very much. Okay, we'll quickly save up. Get that all done. Just, it's, I just want to kind of be cautious, just in case suddenly my complete system shuts down. Which, uh, my computer has done before, which, touch wood, it won't happen again. I tap, tap, tap that wood right there. Um, but, uh, yeah, my PlayStation itself, like PS2, never shut down as well. Touch wood again, it doesn't actually happen now. Um, but yeah. This actual PS2 has actually been pretty reliable, to be fair. I've, I've, I have... Just, yeah, just one. Uh, one of the PS2 in my house, sorry, I, I didn't, like, pause there for, like, any dramatic intention. I just well, I had to think there, so whatever, what PlayStations I actually had here. Um, yeah, I've got another PS2 in my house, which is completely bust. It doesn't, well, it does work slightly. It doesn't work with all discs. Like, it didn't read this at all, and it reads perfectly fine in this one. So, clearly, the disc reader and the other ones are just a bit messed up. As an original chunky one, compared to this one being a slim. So, I can imagine this one's a bit more... Okay, versatile, I'd say. Uh, anyway, because of Empire, all the monsters very, uh... uh all the monsters, all the monsters very angry. It is very hard to hunt for food now. I am angry too, uh, at the godbird. I know she was a holy godbird, but I cannot eat my tongue. Uh, I would tell her myself, but she shows nothing to us. Nothing but a shadow. Grr, I am even more angry now. I don't even know who the chieftain, I'm guessing the chieftain is the bloke to the left there. 
I'm guessing you are the inn person as well. Um, your clothes, they give you away. You must be very tired from your long journey. Please, why don't you stay here for the night? Oh. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I've, I've only, like, I think I'm, yeah, I didn't actually engage in a single battle since I left, but sure, why not? Cheers, though, love. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, please tell me that hasn't actually pushed on a mission, actually. Okay, I had a feeling that might then for a sec. <laughs> um, cheers, love. I greatly appreciate that. I'll just steal your milk while I'm at it as well. Are you the chieftain? Oh, you are. Mumble, mumble. Hmm? Who are you? Gasha, gasha. You do not see it seem to be of this village. I see. So you want to learn about the godbird Emperor? I praise your inquisitive attitudes. According to legend, Emperor. Em, em, I don't know how you, how you say that. Emperor. I, I think it's pronounced Empri, but I'm. I'm Because I could also be pronounced Empri, just by that. Em, Empiri. Empiri? Empiri? And pre as, as well. I, I don't really know. I, I, I honestly don't know how to really pronounce that. Um, once could travel freely between two worlds. The first world is called the world of light, and the and it and is the world we inhabit. The other is called the world of darkness. This ability to travel freely was a very special one. It was only granted to Empri. Yeah. One day, the evil ruler of the dark world of darkness built a huge gate between the two worlds. He was. Yeah, sorry. He was unsatisfied, you see. He wanted to conquer the, not just the world of darkness, but the world of light as well. To prevent a catastrophe, Empire flew to the world of darkness and used all of her power to close the gate herself. It said the legends that her efforts worked. Um, the gate was successfully closed. Unfortunately, she had no energy uh, left to return to the world of light. All that remains to this day is her shadow. It's also said that her shadow occasionally creates a doorway, an entrance to the world of darkness called the Dark Eye. To be honest, I not exactly know what it is, but it said that if you walk through the dark eye, your next step will be into the world of darkness. So I strongly advise you not to casually follow the shadow of Empire, for you may fall into the dark eye without even noticing it. Hmm, I wonder what we need to do. Herp herp, herp herp, herp herp. So yes, yeah, so I believe it or not, we might need to follow the shadow of Empire. 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 <laughs> I can't say it right, I don't know why. Um... Yeah, so we need to follow the shadow of her from a certain point, and that certain point being up on the top uh, of that mountain, or near where the doorway-looking thing is. But what I might do, though, is, as we're barely into this episode so far, what I might just quickly do is I'm going to pop across to Princess Minis now, uh, as we can't really progress with the mansion thing. I did discover about the Le Puff Puff, the Le Puff Puff, um, place as we can only do that... What am I trying to say? Uh... Yeah, no, 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 sorry, we can actually do that now. We can actually go to La Puff Puff now if we wanted to, because you only need the ultimate key to actually get inside of it, which obviously we have now. Um, but I, I, I will save it for now and stuff. We'll do that in kind of an episode where we haven't really got too much coming in. Princess Mini completely loaded in just then. I respect that. Uh, well, hello, I'm Mini Princess of Medals. You know, I, co I collect uh, mini medals from all over the world. Now, we can, we've, we've said this about a bazillion and one times. 287. Ooh. Okay, Auricalcum. Cheers. Oh, Metal King Helm. Nice. Cool. Okay, I believe I'm right. That is actually one of the better helms. Yeah, Metal King. I believe Metal King Helm is the best helmet you can get in the game. Well, again, I say best helmet you can get in the game. Best helmet, best helmet you can get in the game up to the point of doing that dragon statue thing, which I had no idea about. So I, I, I don't know what is beyond that thing, if that makes sense. So... Um, I, I honestly don't know why I never did do that. I think I, because I completed the game, and I was so happy about completing the game. I just don't think I could, I don't know, there's some part of me which didn't want to continue, if that makes sense, to sort of then get to that part. Because it took me a lot of effort and stuff to get to the end of the game, if that makes sense. And I think this is during the time I didn't have a PlayStation 3, um, which was, because my PS3 broke at one point. And, uh, I then sort of, like, returned back to old consoles, like I was on my GameCube for a while, and my, I had my, uh, so I'm trying to tell where we need to go. I fucking goddamn. I wish you could just maneuver this map slightly, but um, yeah, the, I saw it was on my PS3 again for a while. A PS, sorry, PS2 for a while. And I was on my like, PS, uh, like my GameCube for a bit as well. And it's a very strange time because I sort of returned back to a lot of old games. I think that's when I completed it for the first time. I think anyway. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was intriguing. It was intriguing to go back and do that stuff. But obviously, once you've sort of done that once, I don't think I then want to sort of continue on, sort of like do more afterwards. But oh ah ah oh. Ah, uh, that's the... Ah. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, that is the shadow, isn't it? Yep, uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Shadow man. Shadow man. Okay, so I believe if we just follow the shadow, it should take us to where we want to go. By the way, I tried to use my Barrowman's Bell uh, here when I was trying to explore the place as well, and actually wouldn't actually let me in this place, which just was quite... I wasn't shocked, because I, I kind of expected at the same time, but I was a little bit like, hmm, okay, because... 
I didn't truly expect that. I have not seen one of you before. I don't believe anyway. Hellgator. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be tough or not, but fair enough. He might have been spawned in maybe because of me following the following the guy. I don't know. I used to do like how clearly his model is based off of the sea dragons. So you can tell by the way his mouth moves and his like positioning and stuff. And the way his tail kind of curves around. It's exactly the same way as the sea dragons curved. I... I, I, I hate noticing that kind of stuff in games because he sort of like breaks it out of you for a little bit, but then you're like, yeah, it's quite good at the same time. Um, anyway, Falcon Slash, um, Attacky Tacky. Uh, we'll give him another Frizzle as well. I think probably this round should finish him off. I'd be surprised if not. There we go, as I was gonna say. Heligator. I call him Hellgator. Heligator. <laughs> it's like a helicopter, but a Heligator. Okay. Oh, there we are. Fly for me, Emperor. Fly for I, I feel like Emperor, Emperor is how you say it, but Emperor. Emperor. I don't know. Do, 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 do. I also have noticed I'm just kind of subtly, well, I mean, happily kind of like trudging along getting towards this. Forgetting this actually does lead me into like kind of a, not exactly a boss battle straight away, but it does lead me into like a dungeon, which then leads me into quite a difficult boss battle. But uh, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. I also have no idea if the, because that basically what happens is when we eventually do finish this, after these monsters have bloody been defeated, um, we do get to the point where we actually do take on uh, a boss in the Dark World and stuff, and uh, I don't know what happens, because I think you can then, because basically the where that Dark Boss is, it's in that nest place over there, which is that big tower thing with the doors and stuff on it, um, so I mean, I, I don't actually know if, when you've done that, if you can then go back there in the like light world and sort of like ex see different things. I generally don't know. I don't know if that's. I feel like there is, but I don't. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't really want to take my own word for that. To be fair, but I'm not too sure. <laughs> Mucho nachos. Cool. Do you love me some nachos? I actually went, <laughs> I actually haven't told you guys about this. I did recently, uh, I was one of those super cool kids that went to see uh, the Emoji movie recently. Uh, now some of you guys might be like, Jordan, why did you see the Emoji movie? And the reason being was actually because my sister wanted to see it and she's only 10. So I, I am more than happy to see a film my sister if it means that she's going to enjoy it. And I have uh, what's called a limitless card as well where I can go to the cinema like as much as I want to in my, near, my nearest place, uh, which is a cinema uh, uh, company called Odeon. And um, it's good. I mean, you sort of go as often if you want. You sort of pay like a monthly fee, which is cheaper than sort of going. Basically, if you go more than twice a month, it's worth doing it because that will then works out like if you're paying the monthly fee and doing that and you're going over twice a month, you normally make your money back by doing that. But um, yeah, it's uh, it was it was it was just it was a shame that Emoji Movie was as bad as people said because like I went into it kind of hoping it would be just an average kids movie because when you, when you go and see a kids movie, you don't always expect like a gem, which unfortunately isn't, you know, I mean, it's, always, it's sometimes a shame, because obviously if you go in and watch, say, like, say, something like, I don't know, like, Tangled. Tangled is one of my favorite movies of all time. Chicken Run. Chicken Run is one of my favorite movies of all time, genuinely, and Tangled is as well, but maybe not quite as high as Chicken Run. Both kids' movies, both fantastic films. And, like, I mean, stuff like that, which kind of, like, puts movies like that down. I mean, obviously, the big criticism of Emoji Movie was the fact that it was just one big advertisement, which... Watching it, it is. It is just simply put, it's just one giant advertisement, which is a huge shame. But um, and apparently it did quite well in the box office as well. So I mean, give it, give it. It's where credits do. I don't think we'll see an emoji movie two anytime soon because I think the first one's done bad enough. It won't consider making a sequel because um, it hasn't done. When I say it's done well in the box office, I don't think it's done. I, I honestly don't know. I know it's done. I know it's done. Kamikaze. I don't know what Kamikaze does. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know as to what extent Emoji Movie's done well, if that makes sense. I don't know the numbers off by heart, but, uh, yeah. It's fucking always about bazillion fucking points for bl bloody Angus Christ. Oh, Reaper Lord. Um, Master's Grimmer Reaper. <laughs> they, just, they just love that shit, don't they? He uh, becomes a big brother. Uh, learns the Underpants Dance. Oh, I remember the Underpants Dance. Nice. I mean, everyone's leveling up. Of course, it was only like a group of enemies, boys. Calm down. Alright, I... Think what was it? Oh no, it was it was like no. I can't remember. I always I always really forget every single time that I Christ. Um do 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 Oh, okay. 
Bo to 32 and Charisma 27. I every time I always check my book and I always bloody forget. Let's just sling it all in Bo, then I miss the main thing I'll bloody use anyway. A Wonder Archer improves uh, Sheriff's Arrow technique and becomes a Master Seraph's Arrow. That's pretty cool. Nice, that was a, a long old fucking end title screen there, to be fair. Christ. I love when you see the empty chests where I've clearly come along and kind of raided them all. Alright. But, um, yeah, I was, I have to admit that the big thing about Emoji Movie is I didn't expect anything great. I just expected something very average that everyone kind of moaned about and stuff. Oh, it's the Emoji Movie, it's so bad. I kind of hoped everyone was sort of saying that, and sort of like, it was just not actually as bad as it, like, actually was. But, like, it genuinely, the big surprise for me when I watched the films, it was just genuinely as bad as people said. Like, in, in the end, like, for most of the movie, at the very beginning and stuff, I kind of rate it, like, it's, you know, it's an average movie. It was well made in the sense that, like, they made a beginning, end of uh, end and middle of a film. Um, I've forgotten how long it is we have to follow this thing for. Uh, anyway, but yes, yeah, so beginning, end, end and middle of a film. The animation was actually okay. It actually looks pretty nice, to be fair. The script existed. It didn't, it wasn't great. It genuinely really was not great, but it existed. It wasn't awful. Oh, I, no, sorry, I lie. It was awful. But it was sort of like the beginning and stuff. It was, it was just sort of like, I gave it credit where credit's due. It was a film. You know, I mean, it, it existed. It was, it was all right. But then, as I saw, like, for most of it, I'd argue to say it was about like a four out of ten, which honestly is a very below average film, but. I mean, that was sort of how it like stood for it and stuff. But like the end message and like the like the characters and stuff were fucking awful. Like um, High Five was genuinely just the worst thing in it. Like I know he, I know there was like the annoying psychics and stuff. But like if you think of annoying psychics and things, like say for example like fucking Donkey and Shrek. No one ever like went to Shrek and think, oh fucking Donkey, he's a dickhead, isn't he? Like you sort of come out of like uh, the Emoji movie thinking High Five, he's a twat. Like you just can't stand him. I don't, I, I know it was just about all of us and like that, but it's just I just couldn't stand like any of the characters. And I don't really kind of feel the motivation to like any of the characters as well. Um, and it was all very generic and very predictable and stuff, which is no surprise. But that's just that is again just a kids movie. That's not really the way to criticize it. But um, yeah, it was just. Uh, it was a shame it was as bad as it was. That was kind of the big thing. So I told my friends and stuff, I was like, guys, it was equally, it was as bad as everyone says. And they were like, you sure you're not just saying that to be cool? Because everyone's like, cool on hating on the Emoji movie at the moment. And I was like, no, generally it's very, very bad. And, um, yeah, it was, it was genuine, genuine shame. Because, you know, it was, it was just like, I don't know, I, I honestly hoped for something better. But then again, I still don't really know what I hoped for. <laughs> because it was still the Emoji movie. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to see, I mean, to be honest, this has been, it's been a strange time for Sony at the moment, because obviously they made, uh, I f believe they were the main people that would earn money from Spider-Man Homecoming, and obviously because they had it in part with Marvel and stuff, but, um, up, 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 come up, Shadow come back, because I think if you move away from the Shadow, I don't know if you have to do it again, um, man, I really appreciate this Shadow, come on, Shadow the Hedgehog, don't do this to me, Christ, okay, we're, <laughs> No, 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 let's just stop a second. Hang on. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, it was it was intriguing. I I, I I understand what they were trying to do, and I understand there's a bunch of people that are probably very, very uneducated in what kids like and what people. Oh, it's up here, isn't it? Yes, it is, isn't it? Yeah, I can't mind. Yeah, it's not up on this hill. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I get it. I honestly, I I understand movie people. I understand why you made the film. And unfortunately, it's made money, and you made a lot of money probably from the sponsorships and stuff as well, because things like Spotify was in it, Facebook was in it, Instagram was in it, Snapchat was in it. Uh, I want to say I saw a Tumblr icon in there as well. I'm not 100% sure, but it was a lot of like websites and stuff, a lot of apps and things. Um, oh, fucking Candy Crush was obviously in it and stuff. I completely forgot about that part. Um, I, honestly, one of the things I saw, I've only seen one person mention this so far, which I was I was genuinely surprised by, because I honestly expected it, but. Um, I'm a Sony phone user myself, and obviously the phone was made by Sony. Um, I expected all the phones that the kids would use would be Sony Xperia's, and I was honestly surprised they didn't. They weren't. I was like, I was so sad. There was like, okay, because um, I honestly expect them to all be Sony phone of uh, Sony phone. Sorry, because it would just sort of make sense. It'd be like an extra layer of uh, product placement and stuff, which like Sony themselves could benefit off. Like, it would cost nothing extra to put in because they themselves would have it, and then like they could just gain the money off that. But then it didn't seem to sort of like have that, but then I was, I would be thinking on top of that, like, if they had that in there, if the film as, is, is as bad as it is, then technically them, their products are then labelled to that. Whereas, I think, honestly, I honestly think that, it sounds bad, but I honestly think that Sony would generally be smart by not doing that, because, as I said, as the film was as bad as it was, they were taking a chance with putting everyone else's products in there, i.e. Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Candy Crush, blah, 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 putting their products in there and stuff like that by, um, 
not putting their own. I don't think any of the stuff that was in there and stuff was owned by Sony, except obviously for the film itself. So obviously by not having their phones in there, the phones aren't related to a bad film and a bad product, which to be fair, a lot of the film is saying about how the phone is faulty and things, so that would make sense to why Sony wouldn't really want that, because then people would think their phones are faulty and things. Which is fair, so... Um, I better shush for a sec. I better stop talking about the Emoji movie for so much. Alright. Okay, um, I honestly don't know. I was gonna say, I'm not, I'm not sure if we should head back first, but I mean, honestly, we're okay. We don't really need to desperately sort of like, yeah, we should be alright. But yeah, I honestly think they. Oh. <gasps> Do -do 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 -do. Oh, that soundtrack. You always know shit is about to kick off when this stuff goes on. Let's see what the guys have to say about this. What about you? What are you going to say? We actually have come to another world. Now this is a story for the pub. After Emperor and the Lord Darkness, it's not a... It's not such a great leap to believe in the existence of other worlds. But to actually find yourself in one, to tread in the soil? Um, well, sitting in the... Cock and ball, I never would have ex imagined sort of stuff existed. Much less that I'd end up seeing it for myself. I thought the only other world that was going to be a real creepy place ain't half as bad as I thought. I mean, ain't so different from our world, really, is it? You just have to uh, get used to the lack of colour. They must have uh, had grey-only policy here. You're as untarranted, you're an observant as you're a thick. It ain't different at all. It's exactly the same. Apart from the colours, of course, as you were rightly, for once, pointed out. Oh, yeah. Now, come to mention it. There seems to be a very strong correlation between the world and our own. A strong cu curry lay what? Ah, never mind. I was merely thinking out loud. Take no notice. I can't figure out what you try what you're on about sometimes. I wanna know what you where's <laughs> where the strong curry curry luncheon is. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, we've come all the way. We might as well look around. According to the chief Empu Chu, um Empria should be might must be somewhere around here. What on earth happened? One minute we we're following pre shadows, and to the next we find this queer place. The landscape is exactly the same, except have my eyes given out? Everything appears to be black and white. Sure, this can't be the other world we were told, told about. I think you just anyway. All right, so I believe, if my knowledge is correct, which obviously it always is, I believe we need to go to the center where we started off. I think I'm not too sure, but um, anyhow, um, go and watch films and stuff though. I'll finish up with that. That's all the end of my topic and stuff with emoji movies and things. I haven't really got too much else to really say about it, other than the fact that I was disappointed, if that makes sense. And I know it sounds strange for anyone to say they were disappointed on the emoji movie because everyone's been like, oh, it's so bad. But like, I was just, I was generally hoping for an average kids movie. And it wasn't even that. But, um, but yeah, so I mean, um, other than that, the only other things I've seen, I've actually, I've actually had a weirdly busy time at the cinema recently. I've actually, because I was looking through the list of the films that are in cinemas at the moment, and I've actually seen a majority of them, which I was quite surprised about, which I guess makes sense with my card and stuff, but, um, I've seen uh, Atomic Blonde, I watched it literally yesterday, which was okay. It was, it was very okay, which is, a, again, a bit of a disappointment stuff. Um, the action in it was great. There's like some a really great long action set piece and stuff, which was absolutely fantastic. I cannot like deny that and stuff. It was great, but there was just like a just a, an abundance of really weird story parts and stuff into it, which is which is strange. But I I get what they were trying to do. They make kind of kind of trying to make a I guess my best comparison to it is I watched it and it felt very much like I was watching Tinker Sailor Taylor Soldier Spy, which I was not a huge fan of. I thought it was okay, but I thought it was very very. It was honestly boring. That was just, it literally was the, that was the problem with the film. It was just a boring film. And um, that was kind of the issue that uh, Tommy Blonde had as well. There's a lot of very, very boring parts, which I'm, I mean, was vamped up with a great, really great soundtrack and stuff. And I mean, it worked. It wasn't like Suicide Squad level soundtrack where it was just placed in for like absolutely fuck all reason. But um, it just, it worked really well, the soundtrack and stuff. But it, it was a shame that it just sort of like, it was quite as dull as it was. But, um, Oh no, youngest is paralyzed and he can't move. Oh, sorry guys. <sighs> um, but uh, what was I gonna say? Um, 
yeah, no, it was okay though. I mean, I can't really argue myself and say like it wasn't great because it was it was generally a very very good film. But it was just a, it was sort of a shame it was just so boring at some points because it was just a lot of points where not much really going on. There was like it, it was because obviously the, one of the big things when big links between um, the two films is that basically the director of Atomic Blonde, his biggest kind of like ignoring some of his more recent stuff which is coming up, he basically directed well part in part directed. Um, John Wick 1, I believe. He didn't have anything to do with John Wick 2. I think he was a producer in John Wick 1 or something like that. And then this was his first, I believe, his like second directorial stuff because he did the Deadpool short, he's done this, and now he's doing Deadpool 2. And, um, yeah, so I mean, he, he's, he, he knows what he's doing and stuff, but obviously the big comparison between the two is John Wick. I mean, no one can deny that when they see this film and stuff, they do see a very big correlation between this and John Wick. And the, the big difference between the two is obviously with John Wick, it's... A great film with absolutely fantastic action pieces, which aren't really few and far between. There's like there's a lot of action stuff like a lot of the time. There's not really a moment of stuff we can sit down and relax because the film has either got something coming around the corner or coming up very very soon, both in John Wick One and John Wick Two. Um, but the kind of difference between that and what this is is there's a lot of great action stuff, like great fight scenes in the film. I just noticed there's a little path to the left there which I'll take. Ooh, dark slimes. Um, yeah, a lot of great action stuff in the film, but it is just, it was, it's all like, if you imagine the fact, like, if you imagine again, like, if you imagine, like, in John Wick, as a few and far between action scenes, but if you imagine, like, action itself is like a bag of Skittles, if you imagine that, like, the the action itself is the red Skittles, I'm not, I don't have a preference of Skittles, maybe they're good, I don't actually have any idea, red eat Skittles, um, you call them the Red Skills. Basically, if you imagine a bag of John Wick Skills, the Red Skills are everywhere, and I'd say maybe about, 10% of the skills actually in the bag are green, and the green skill of skills are actually exposition. So, if you have any luck, basically one in every 10 chance you're going to pick out a skill that's going to be red. If not, I'm sorry, one in every 10 skill it's going to be exposition, but other than that it will be a red uh, skill, which people that like reds will enjoy. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know about that, my analogy here, but just work with me. Whereas if you picture with, with a Tommy Blonde, um, it's kind of the opposite way around. Like, I don't, I'm not really being that sarcastic or let that off of this to be fair, to say that probably I'd say maybe 20% of the film, I, I think that's honestly a bit too much, I'd say maybe, uh, no, 20% I think is honestly maybe, uh, I, don't, I don't know, it's kind of kind of hard to say, I want to say 20% is action in the film, but it's kind of hard to say if it is or not, I'd say maybe 20%, it's, it's generally hard to sort of say as to whether it would be 20%, but we'll say 20%, um, rather than 10 is uh, action in the film, compared to the other 80% of the film is all exposition. I'm talking all spy jargon, uh, not really that tense scenes and stuff, great dialogue, it's really quite cool dialogue and stuff, but it's not really too intriguing, it's very subtle, very slow. If you've watched Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, you will genuinely feel like you're watching Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy a lot while watching this film, because there's such huge, hugely similar kind of elements and stuff to it, because obviously they're both espionage films and stuff, and as a whole, they're, they're great. They are really both great films in their own like and stuff, but the issue is, I think where Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy lights up, and it's an amazing film in the sense because it, it offers that kind of like unique kind of aspect by making an espionage film which is slow, methodical and stuff, and very thriller-esque, whereas Tommy Blonde has like very life, uh, lifeful, um, lifeful, li lively kind of aspects to it as well, with like the art of being music and things, and things that make it very like, just like, I, I, like lively as a whole, I'd say, and that is the difference between the two, I think, where like where uh, Ticket Tailor Soldier Spy sticks with that same theme throughout. Atomic Blonde sort of like darts between the two, too unintentionally. It's sort of like it has the action pack kind of side to it as well. It has the lively music, but it has a lot of very slow, methodical moments and stuff, like overlapped with like lively music and stuff, which is I don't know. It's 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 strange. It's too much of a combination of a lot and stuff, and I. As I said, I, I really felt like I was sat there watching that film again, and I, I don't get me wrong, I like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, sorry, I wouldn't say I liked it, oh, I don't know. I enjoyed taking Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, but like, I can't say I'm a huge fan, because I didn't think it was amazing, but I thought it was okay. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was good to see Gary Oldman get a fucking Oscar nomination, finally. Jesus Christ, that man deserves one fucking ages ago. It, I, I am going to be so disappointed, though, because, I, I mean, Gary Oldman is a fucking fantastic actor, fucking beautiful, and like, all the great kind of roles he's done in the past, like absolutely fantastic, like generally just 
bloody fantastic roles he's done. It is a huge, huge shame that like he has not won an Oscar yet. Like I, I hope one day he does. I know Oscars don't really mean much to a lot of actors and stuff just because. Well, I mean, they, they clearly mean some things to some actors, but not everyone. Um, but I really hope he wins one because he just deserves it. He's only been nominated once for fucking um, that, and it. I mean, for uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which I mean, his performance was good. It was very, very good. But his performance in my books is like amazing and stuff like Leon, uh, even like Dark Knight. I mean, Dark Knight. Unfortunately, he didn't really have enough screen time or enough time to sort of like bust out many acting chops. He was great in them, but I don't really think he's there. Less like Oscar nomination worthy. They're just. You know, they're, they're, I don't know. I don't think this ever, like, um, he's, no, he's, he's never really prominent enough to sort of, like, worthy, like, kind of an Oscar nomination in that kind of sense, but, um, what was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I may be cool to see him, like, get, like, an Oscar, or, like, actual, actually win an Oscar sometime soon, but, anyway, um, but yeah, and so, to, to end this topic, as I'm jabbering on quite a fair amount, um, Basically, Tommy Blonde is great. If you really want to see really great action scenes, I'm talking this this one scene in it which is really bloody good. I was watching the entire time. I was like, "Fuck me, this is good." And I've, I'm the kind of person that likes films like The Raid and fucking John Wick and stuff. So I'm, I wouldn't call myself like a. Okay, that's good. No, I'm dying. That's good. Uh, I wouldn't call myself like an artiste in that kind of like or an expert in those kind of areas and stuff. But I know what I'm kind of like. I I I sort of have a picky taste in the area, if that makes sense. So I don't just like all action things. But it was um. It was intriguing. It was. It, I would recommend it. I would generally recommend it for people that want to see that kind of film. But, you know, I mean, just, just prepare for like a, a lot of just exposition stuff. But um, yeah. Other than that, I mean, the only other ones I've seen are War of the Planet of the Apes, which was pretty good. I preferred it to Atomic Blondes. I definitely preferred it to Emoji Movie and things. Um, and yeah, I mean, honestly, with War of the Planet of the Apes, I haven't really got too much to really say about it. It was a really enjoyable film. I genuinely really enjoyed it and stuff. Uh, I had a moment in it which nearly fucking, I, I, I hate it in cinemas where I get a little bit welly, uh, when I say welly, my eyes sort of well up a little bit, I mean, and, um, yeah, it was, it was a bit of a, there was an intense moment where some stuff happens and I was like, Ooh. but it was really good made, really, really well made and stuff, and uh, the performances, performances, sorry, were great, um, Woody Harrelson was okay, uh, I'm always more as than anything in when it comes down to the Planet of the Apes films. I'm always blown fucking away by Andy Serkis and stuff. I fucking love. I love Andy Serkis. I, I want him to be everything. I want him to be everything and every time and everywhere. But like, he's just in my books. I think he's he's amazing. But um, yeah, as a whole, just really good, enjoyable film. I, I I didn't think it was quite as good as number two. I really liked, like, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, in my books, is the best of the trilogy. Um, but I'd put this on past the first one. I, I enjoyed the first one, and I loved the second one, and I enjoyed the third one, to be fair. Um, I don't know, honestly, if I would say I enjoyed Planet of the Apes more than I enjoyed Atomic Blonde. I think... I'd probably say I did, just because I, I think War Planet of the Apes is more of a full film. Like, it's more there. Uh, whereas Tommy Blonde was a bit too much all over the place and stuff. But, um... Yeah. Uh, I think other than that... Uh, there is one more I've seen. Uh, so it's Planet of the Apes. Uh, I, well, I guess Baby Driver is the only other one I've already seen as well. I'm not too sure if I'd really count that in cinemas at the moment, because the moment in, in uh, cinemas over here, it's literally got one screening a day, which is really strange, because apparently the film did all right, and obviously, in my books, I, I can imagine Baby Driver would do better than uh, War of Planet of the Apes, but I, by the looks of it, it that's a completely wrong way around, because I've, I've honestly thought Baby Driver was going to do really well, because it's got, it's got people like... John Hamm, Kevin Spacey, even oh, Aaron Elgar, I think it is, the main guy. Um, all people people would come and see. Director Edgar Wright, who people would come and see. And I, as I've said, it hasn't done amazing. It's done, it's made profit, and it's definitely seen as a profitable film. But in comparison to what else is out, I believe, if you want to sort of like put it in the kind of the best way, I believe it's probably done equally as well as Emoji Movie, which is a thing to say, you know what I mean? But, um... Yeah, I, there is one of that's going annoying. I'm gonna have to actually check to be fair. See what other other thing I've watched recently. I watched uh, what did I watch last night? I watched a film last night because I stayed up watching it and stuff. Um, oh, San Andreas. Yeah, I finished it up this morning. This thing, so it was okay. Is it not? Okay, where am I meant to go? Uh Am I meant to Okay. Am I meant to, am I meant to go to the village? I honestly thought I'd have to go hmm. Hmm. 
<laughs> Silly Jordan on that one. I honestly thought I was meant to go here. Uh... Okay. I guess I am kind of going the right way. I mean, I just, let's just make sure I haven't just completely wasted a journey. I, I mean, I was... Yeah. I kind of made a slight detour. I could have gone there mildly quicker, but hang on. Wait, am I going the wrong way now? Not really. There we go. Okay, um... I kind of forgot I need to go here. Just, I'm gonna have to quickly just check to see what I watched recently. There was a, there was one other thing I, I know I've seen in the cinemas recently. Um, emoji movie, Spider Man. That's the only, yeah, that's the only one I've seen recently. That's Spider Man. Um, that's the only one. Uh, I only have a film stuff I've seen in cinemas at the moment, which is really, really great. I actually really like Spider Man. I mean, I know, um, judging by how I normally judge most of my films, to be fair, I judge them by IMDb. Um, it looks to be sort of like a little bit mixed in the sense that obviously it's about 7.9, which is quite low for a, like, a, by what I thought was a, quite a, like, a well-liked film. Um, uh, sorry, well-liked Marvel movie, because most of the time Marvel films, at least like that, they normally kind of stay up there quite high for quite a while, but, um, yeah. Now, I, I don't, I can't actually remember having to go to the village, but I'm going to go there anyway, to be fair, because I swear, the, I swear Emperor was just sort of sat on top of that hill there, but I do not know. Um, but yeah, honestly, like, I haven't really got too much going to really say about Spider-Man, to be fair, it was, it was just a genuinely a really good film, I really enjoyed it. I honestly, I honestly thought, arguably one of my favourite, like, more favourite, um, Marvel movies I've seen, to be fair. I honestly don't, when it comes to Marvel movies and stuff, I always bloody forget which ones I've seen. Um, because, uh, yeah, I just, I was, I was just always, literally always fucking forget which ones, like, actually exist and stuff. When I say exist, I mean, sorry, which ones I actually enjoyed, because, I think, mean, honestly, to recent memory, like, um, Guns of Galaxy 2 at one point was my favourite, like, Marvel movie and stuff, and I think Spider-Man just knocked it off there, but if anything, they're tied, because they're both, in my mind, really bloody great films. Um, but anyway, guys and guys, what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to actually end this episode here, because we've kind of been going on for quite a bit of time, so I apologise for that. Um, but yeah, guys and guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been another episode of Dragon Quest VIII. Hold up! Kot <laughs> Oh, okay. It's beefing. Ah, so this is what all the fuss was about. If I'm not mistaken, you must have come through the dark eye. You are dwellers from the world of light, no? Just as I thought. Then it must be the will of the goddess that brings you to us. Well, there is something I wish to discuss with you. Perhaps you would visit me in my home later. If you will just promise me that you can take your time and look around the village as much as you like. I will be waiting then. My home is the largest dwelling here, so you'll know where to find me. Flock of Empichu. Let us go back to our work and carry on as normal. Do not forget to be kind to strangers. Okay, and as well, actually, he just kind of cleared up the fact of how to pronounce the name of the village. Mpichu. Mpichu. See, what I always find unique about this, though, is, like, how do they decide what keeps colour? Because, like, fire keeps colour. I mean, so fire, fire keeps colour, water keeps colour, but everything else doesn't. And then, like... So this water down here kind of has color, but then it's like technically the rock underneath has the is the part with the color because the water itself isn't. And it's well, actually no. I I how did how would you even? 
You know what? Looking at that gave me too much of a brain melt. Anyway, guys and gals, yeah, as I said before, I was going to end this episode, but then that cussing happened. I'm going to end this episode now. Uh, guys and gals, you guys have been amazingly beautiful and perfect as ever. Hope you guys have a lovely day and afternoon. What are you guys doing right now? I hope to see you guys in the next one. Um, thank you guys so much once again for supporting the channel and stuff and supporting the uh, series and stuff by watching the Dragon Quest series. It means so much to me that you guys are enjoying this. And I will continue to make it and still... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Start that again. I will continue to make it until we finish this game just because I know you guys enjoy it so much and thank you guys so much. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next one. C'est la vie, hasta vista, and goodbye. Oh, ciao!